Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today in this video, I am reacting to the Dallas Mavericks versus Boston Celtics, the finals prediction. This final should be very epic. The NBA discourse is gonna be insane for this. For more content like this, make sure to like this video. I'm gonna have the original video link down in the description below. Top right into it. Good Kyrie, y'all saw the doubters that were saying that y'all wouldn't work. Four for 12 points, eight rebounds. And now a message from this crowd. The D gray that ESPN gave y'all. Could y'all talk about D? just yeah, they gave him a D rating a D for grade. the trade Tough. from the Nets. So could you? Could you <laughs> <laughs> the Boston Celtics have made it back to the NBA Finals, and this time it's going to be Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown trying to get their first championship versus Luka Doncic, who is also seeking to do the same. And the drama between these two teams runs so deep. So before we get to the content, make sure you drop like, subscribe, and turn on our notifications to help the channel grow. Now that we got all that out of the way, cue the intro. That's a good intro. I need an intro like this, but I need to work on my intros, man. Before we start this upload, Prize Picks has us with another oh. free square. Hey, go check out his Prize Picks, but I'm gonna skip all of that. Let's begin. Mic check one two one two. What's going on, everybody? The Boston Celtics are huge winners for making it back to the NBA Finals. I mean, the Dallas Mavericks are even bigger winners for making it to the NBA Finals. The only person that I could think of that is a huge loser in this scenario is it's Grant over. Williams. Oh yeah. my God, poor guy. I mean, one year ago, Grant Williams was a huge role player on the Boston Celtics, but because of the brand new CBA, the Celtics had to move on from him. They traded Grant Williams to the Dallas Mavericks in a sign and trade. I mean, but Grant Williams wasn't getting along with the Dallas Mavericks. <laughs> that's funny. But, hey, even though that's the case, if the Dallas Mavericks win, he will get a ring. So I know he, I know who he's rooting for, for sure. And was traded during the trade deadline to the Charlotte Hornets. And now Tough both of go. his former teams are in the NBA Finals and Grant Williams is on the Charlotte Hornets. Dealing with Rough. teammates that are involved in alleged lawsuits for DV, allegedly Rough. running over a kid's foot, and a team Rough. that would put an 11-year-old kid in that type of situation to begin with. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, we made a whole video on this absurd LaMelo Ball situation. That we'll team's leadership the end screen. Is Make sure you check that one out because it's absurd. The boss Celtics have frequently been referred to as the San Francisco 49ers of the NBA. It's For a sure. team that has a plethora of talent that is constructed really, really well, that has two capable stars that have yet to even hit the prime of their careers in Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, but there are questions of whether these two can actually win a championship together, and the Boston Celtics have been very aggressive in trying to answer that question. This past year, the Boston Celtics decided to go all in, trading one of their core players in Marcus Smart to get back Kristaps Porzingis. They weren't done there because they also traded for Drew Holiday. This team is going to be capped out to the max by the time you get to this offseason. As Jalen Brown signed a five-year, $303.7 million, million dollar contract. Do y'all think he's worth that? Five years, $303 million, that's $60 million a year? Y'all should be in the gym, bro. Try to, get be, try to be in the NBA, bro, because $303 million, yeah last year and this summer not even a household Jason name Tatum like he a lot of people know him bank as well not as household he could sign name. a five year million 338 oh million dollar contract extension you pair that with the fact that the celtics signed drew holiday to a four-year 135 million dollar contract extension just a month ago and they currently have Kristaps porzingis on a two-year 60 million dollar contract <laughs> the for money the most part, you, you have a team that is fully capped out this is the core of the boston celtics and they're all in on this core and if it doesn't work out then this summer, there's a lot of questions that this team is going to have to answer. Jalen Brown even said it himself when he won the Eastern Conference Finals MVP award, saying that we feel like we're a different team than we were last year and the year before that. I know everybody wants to continue to kind of pigeonhole us to what was happening in the past, but we've had a different team every single year, different coaches. We've had like three coaches in the last five years. And still people want to make it seem like yeah, it's but the he, same, he, he it's, the same act like, it's the same, it's the same. Time has gone like by, a lot of changes has been I mean, it's changed, but not. We're ready to put our best they're pretty forward. stable. There's no question. It may the change, but they, they have a they're pretty stable. Tremendous amount of experience in the postseason, and this is something that I said would aid them moving down their careers all the way back in Jason Tatum's rookie season when they made it to the Eastern Conference Finals. So now that they had this incredibly long and arduous road to the NBA Finals, would they finally be able to conclude their season with an NBA championship? Many teams are roasting the Celtics for having what could have been the easiest path to the NBA Finals. 
every time I make a short on this, Celtics fans come at me. Y'all had the easiest road in a long time, if not ever. But, hey, at the same time, none of that matters if you win against this team unless Luka gets hurt. If Luka stays healthy and y'all win, then, hey, everything is good. Y'all are good. So when you compare it to other Eastern Conference teams that made it to the NBA Finals, was it really that easy? The Boston Celtics faced off against the Miami Heat in the first round when the Miami Heat didn't have Jimmy Butler. They would then face off against the Cleveland Cavaliers, but the Cavaliers wouldn't have Donovan Mitchell for two of those games. They would then sweep the Indiana Pacers, but the Pacers wouldn't have Tyrese Halliburton in two of those games, making it all the way to the NBA Finals. But when you compare it to other teams that had a similar path, I mean, I know LeBron had a lot of them. The Miami yeah. Heat faced Faced off against the Chicago Bulls versus Derrick Rose and the Pacers without Danny Granger. In 2015, the Cavaliers played an incredibly injured and battered Atlanta Hawks team in the conference finals. In 2016, the Cleveland Cavaliers made it to the NBA finals and beat a Golden State Warriors team that lost Andrew Bogut for half the series and lost Draymond Green for game five. I ain't giving them that. I ain't giving that excuse, man. I'm not well giving, I'm not giving, I'm not giving, I'm not giving the Warriors that excuse. I'm not giving y'all. I never give them that excuse. Steph Curry came. He had a sprain MCL, but when he faced Portland that one game and he said, I'm back because he had the most points in an overtime ever, they weren't saying that. So I'm not giving – Andrew Bogey and hurt, hurt them a lot, but you blew a 3-1 lead. you the MVP. Two of those three games at home finished finish the job. 2017, Isaiah Thomas was playing with a severe hip injury. And in 2018, the Cleveland Cavaliers faced Rose LeBron, the Boston huh? Celtics <laughs> without LeBron, Kyrie Irving huh? and without Gordon Hayward. And the Cavaliers barely won in seven games. I'm not saying that Celtics' path to the NBA Finals wasn't easy. I just wanted to play devil's advocate to this point. But at the same time, coming into this season, I felt like the Boston Celtics were the favorite in the East. They had the most continuity, they made sizable upgrades to their roster, and they had the most experience. When you take a look at the Boston Celtics' record, they had 14 more wins than the second place team in the East, the yeah. New York Knicks. The Milwaukee Bucks were kind of a shit show throughout the season. Also the Philadelphia injured. 76ers were, also were injured. injured throughout the season. The Cleveland Cavaliers are still trying to figure things out. I think a successful coaching change could potentially get there. There really wasn't any other team. Kenny Atkinson to the Cavs would be dope. Saw making it to the NBA Finals this year than the Boston Celtics. Now, is this a testament to how easy their path was? Or is it a testament to their greatness? Or is it a testament to how weak the Eastern Conference has Both. become? Um, I say let it's me both. know in the comment section down below. The Boston Celtics are facing off against the Dallas Mavericks, a team that desperately needed this NBA Finals run, a team that has been trying to figure out how to put Luka Doncic in a situation to consistently compete for championships from the moment that they drafted him. Luka Doncic was starting to get this reputation of being just James Harden 2.0, a player that knew how to stuff the stat sheet in a masterful way, but wouldn't be good enough to get you to the NBA Finals. But to the Dallas Mavericks credit, they did everything they possibly could could to get Luka Doncic the help they needed. Starting all the way from trading for Kyrie Irving to continuing yeah. with a strong offseason where they a great drafted trade, Derek, Derek Lively. Lively yeah, they did briefly attempt trades. to trade for Grant Williams but moved on from him when that didn't work. And during the trade deadline, they swung a masterful trade for Daniel Gafford. Uh, Luka Doncic made the most of his strengths and mitigated his weaknesses. But the you know what's ish interesting is that when you're a contender, and I miss these days as a Rockets fan, there's a lot of teams in the NBA with really bad, like really bad teams with really good players. They're just in a terrible environment. And PJ Washington and Daniel Gafford is the biggest examples of that. Like you take them from that environment where they're just wasting away and you put them in front of a superstar player and a capable cast and a great structure and they look outstanding. So, you know, when I was, when the Rockets were good, I was always looking around the league and hoping, okay, we try for that guy. Let's try for this guy because he may not be doing well. A good a good example is P.J. Tucker. I think he was in Phoenix. He wasn't doing nothing. Then he came to Houston. He part of a 60-win team. So just looking around the league, seeing what players can we get, snatch them so we can actually be successful. That was something I was always uh, interested in. So hey, Dallas, they had a great, um, that was a great example of that, so. The one storyline that we're all looking forward to in this entire NBA Finals matchup has to be Kyrie Irving's history with the Boston Celtics. Remember, Kyrie Irving about a year and a half ago had a completely different perception about his career. A player that was melodramatic about everything. A player that had everything handed to him. A player that had the career that any basketball player would want, but turned it down. He had the opportunity to play with LeBron James. But because of this one reporter, it seems like he didn't want to be LeBron James's teammate anymore. But Kyrie, um, Tristan father called figure. LeBron a great father at the Chicago game. What? what? Yes, he did. Great father. Oh, great father. father. Oh, I thought he's going back. I got I interpreted that that completely wrong. Okay. 
I thought you yeah. said he was a great father to him. I was like, what? Called him a great father. So yeah. what type of parental role has he played for you and your teammates? Oh, failed at the... Oh, okay, so you... T- uh, yeah, yeah. I, parental role? I, honestly, I'm, I'm... You know, he's... <laughs> I don't know how to really answer that question. I'm, he's been a he's been a, a great, great leader, leader for us. Yeah. I wouldn't. I have one father. I, that's my dad, Frederick Irving. Eventually, he would get traded to the Boston Celtics, where he was going to be the cornerstone of an Eastern Conference superpower yeah, was, and one of the so most stupid. storied franchises in the NBA. Even at some point, deciding to commit to the city of Boston. But there will be more spaces up there. Kyrie, how important is it to see number eleven up there one day? It's a. Uh, it's quite Lie important. And, uh, Lie to him. I'm, I appreciate that scout. I joined him, but I shared it with some of my teammates as well as the organization and everyone else in Boston. If you guys will have me back, I plan on re-signing here next year. Boom! So. But then very shortly after, he started <laughs> flirting with Kevin Durant. And next thing you know, Kyrie Irving decided to go to Brooklyn to team up with Kevin Durant. And his stint with Brooklyn was very, very interesting. In his preseason return to Boston, he would be caught burning sage at the TD Garden in order to cleanse the energy in the building. And then things would get to a brand new point when the Brooklyn Nets faced off against the Boston Celtics that year in the playoffs. In the playoffs yeah. Kyrie Irving accused the Boston Celtics of racism. I mean, it's not my first time being a opponent in, in Boston uh, so you know I'm just looking forward to competing with my teammates and um, you know hopefully we can just keep it strictly basketball you know there's no belligerence or any racism going on subtle racism and people yelling from the crowd um, but even if it is <laughs> yeah, part to of that to the nature of the game when he's saying his love his controversy take he put his head up and is down. it something you've experienced in Boston a, before I'm not the only one that could attest to this but it's just you know it, it won't it <laughs> yeah, just stop, just stop it is what it is. Yeah, you just uh, yeah, it's what we have. Live life. Ryan oh, well, <laughs> and the Celtics definitely booed Kyrie Irving whenever he took the floor in game three of that series versus Boston. Fans, he played one earlier when there were no fans in the building. This is when he was introduced to the crowd. But that's pretty normal considering the fact that the Celtics gave up Jay Crowder, Isaiah Thomas, and assets in order to get him. Considering the fact that this guy was supposed to be your franchise cornerstone and then he just turned his back on you after promising he'd stay, I think it's pretty normal yeah. to boo Kyrie Irving in this instance. But Kyrie yeah. Irving would escalate this entire beef. Stepping wipe his on foot. Lucky wipe, after a game wipe his foot victory him? versus the Celtics, yeah. which got a lot of yeah. Celtic fans upset. And this was just yeah, one yeah. of the most exciting rivalries in sports. In the 2020 22 playoffs, fans would start to cheer Kyrie sucks. In the fourth quarter. For the most part, that would take us to where we are in this rivalry right now. There wouldn't really be that much so a water between bottle, the Celtics yeah. and Kyrie Irving because the 2023 season was when Kyrie Irving would get traded to the Dallas Mavericks, and it hasn't become relevant until now. But Celtic fans certainly didn't forget because they chanted Kyrie sucks when these two faced off against each other two months ago. Four for 12 points, eight rebounds. And now a message from this crowd. And the fact that these two are facing off against one another in the NBA Finals is certainly going to make this way more interesting. As for my personal prediction, Luka Doncic's career so far has him slowly progressing to where he wants to finish and mm-hmm. gradually climbing the ladder. For example, All during time the 2022 player, yeah. season, he finally made it to the Western Conference Finals. He missed the playoffs last year, but he was able to make it to the NBA Finals this year. When you take a look at the Minnesota Timberwolves team, they were the best defensive team in the NBA this and year, leading the league too. in defensive rating. Orlando number three, shout out to them. Houston number 10, shout out to us. This year. You compare that to the Boston Celtics, they were the top team in terms of offensive rating, and they were the third best team in terms of defensive rating. They also second. led the league right, so in tripping. net rating. I feel like the combination of Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, and Drew Holiday's experience in the NBA Finals, plus the fact that the Celtics have a all-around better team, is going to result in the Boston Celtics being able to win this series in five games so that's my Dang, first five games i've been wrong before as a laker fan <laughs> i would prefer that not to happen let me know in the comment section down below what your prediction for the nba all right that's that's great i'm gonna um, stop it off at that point um i pick boston and six i think luca is gonna really put great pressure on these boys i think the dallas mavericks have been through a lot in this postseason so i think they're very very their momentum's really high um but you know, Boston hasn't been challenged in the postseason, but they are still a better team and they have experience and they so if Boston doesn't get it done in this NBA finals, then I'm telling you, 
heads will roll. I'm just telling you right, that heads will roll if they don't get it done. Um, but they're the better team. They had the best team in the league the whole season. Number one offense. Number what two defense. Finish the job. But for more content like this, make sure to like the video. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. We're on the road to 1,000 subscribers. Definitely would appreciate all the love. And I'm going to catch you guys on the next video. And I'm out of here. Peace.